hope it gets lit, bro. Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is going to be about some of the settings that we use in OBS. I'm by no means an expert, but I've done a little bit of research. Um, guys like Aris Heller, I suggest that you go and check them out as well, especially Aris Heller and some of the other experts like Nati um, on YouTube, and they can give you lots of insights on how to work OBS. But today I'm just going to be sharing some of what's worked for us and I hope that it's helpful for you. And we play Fortnite, but I think these settings can work no matter what game you play. Guys, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. And if you'd like regular updates, please follow us on Twitter. The link will be up there somewhere. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so um, it's just gonna be a simple run through. The main thing I'm gonna do is run through the settings and some of these settings over here. I'm not going to go into how I've set up the scenes and things like that uh, because, yeah, that's a that's an endless story. I mean, you can set up your stream the way that you want to set it up. Uh, so, yeah, let's check out the settings. So I'm just going to go through it page by page and you can match yours to what I've got over here. I updated OBS yesterday, so it's the latest version. So, yeah, it's 27.0.1, as you can see there in the top left hand corner so on the general tab the only things that i have checked up here is um automatically checked for updates but these aren't too important the things over here um snap sensitivity we have that enabled that's just when you are lining things on your screen um so it'll snap them align them snap it to the edge of the screen etc uh that's when you're adding new sources I've got that checked i've got that checked and I've got that checked in studio mode. And then the last three things I've got checked. Okay, here's the more important thing. So in stream, we stream to YouTube. If you're streaming to Twitch, you will change this over here. If you're streaming to Facebook, you change it to wherever you're streaming to. Right, so we've got YouTube, RTMP. That works fine for us. You choose what server. We've got it on primary, YouTube, ingest server, legacy RTMP. Works just fine for us. And then your stream key, so that's the key that you paste, um, you copy and paste from your YouTube streaming channel. When you say go live, there's a stream key there. You copy that and you put it in here. Then output, also super important. So output is super important. So for, for streaming, this is very dependent on the type of machine that you have and how powerful your machine is. Um, so... We use the NVIDIA codec because we have an NVIDIA card in here. You can also change that um, to AMD, depending on what card you have. So if you have an AMD card in your machine, then you'll change it to that. And then you can also change it to CPU processing. So we prefer to use the GPU because um, it just works better for us. So you're not stressing the CPU as much. And then moving down to rate control, we use CBR and we use 10,000 kilobits per second that works really well for us keyframe interval that we have on two i'm not sure why we have that on two but it's on two our preset we have it on quality so that's quite high guys um if your machine can't really handle it you might want to drop your quality um so to low like one of these other settings here so your machine can't handle it you drop it to either performance max, perf max performance low latency low latency quality you drop it to one of those but we operate on quality and then if you also have issues with your machine you can drop um your your bitrate you can drop the bitrate quite a bit but that's going to cause it to have a bit of ghosting you know so it's not going to be a crystal clear image especially when there's a lot of movement also you can see that we have it on 1920 by 1080 so we're outputting in full HD. A lot of people will recommend that you go to um, 720p, which is still HD, but it's not as high resolution. But then the cool thing is you can lower your bitrate because um, you're not outputting such a high resolution. So your image will be more crisp, even though the resolution is not as high. When there's a lot of movement, uh, there won't be that blurriness. So that's just something that you can also do. Uh, profile we put it on high profile that's just how um, how important a process obs is on your computer so it's a high priority process so we put the profile on high um i'm not even sure what these are but we don't have look at checked we've got psycho visual tuning check 
GPU we've got set to zero and then max B frames we have set to two. I'm not sure why we have those, but they work really well for us. For recording again, so recording type, you set your path over there. We have it on standard. I can't change that now. And I'm not too sure what the other types are, but um, we have it on standard and that works really well. The recording format, make sure to change that to MP4. Um, the only sort of challenge that I think we've had with MP4 is that when you stop your recording or if you forget to stop your recording and you close the program or you shut down your machine, um, that whole file is going to corrupt. So make sure that you stop your recording and then you close OBS and then you shut down your machine. Don't don't shut down your machine in yeah without without stopping recording because otherwise yeah you you will lose that file it's happened to us a couple of times formats like like uh where is it now this mkv is not a great format for editing i find that premiere pro has a problem reading that so mp4 is by far the best format you must just remember to stop recording afterwards rate control again we have it on cbr but rate is 10,000 kilobits per second the preset again is on quality profile is on high Again, psycho visual we have on, uh, we have checked. Look at it is not checked. And then GPU zero, max B frames two. Oh, and then also audio tracks, guys. So we record to multiple audio tracks so that um, we have this microphone over here is track one. And then the microphone in Rory's headset, the, that microphone there is track two. And then track four is all of the desktop audio. So that's your game audio. And also um, if you in a in a call with someone, a Discord call, that also pulls through there. If any music is playing, that also records on that channel. But it's really helpful to, to have them recording to different channels because if your voice is a bit quiet, um, when there's a lot of noise happening in the scene, like a high action scene, you can crank up the voice a bit. Or you can lower it a bit, you know, so if you scream and, and the clip goes too loud, if it clips, you can bring it down a little bit. You can also crank up the audio of the game audio, but you know, so it just gives you a little bit more freedom to play. Audio, yeah, so we just set all of this to 320, but right, I can't change this now because I'm busy recording on here at the moment, so I can't change it at the moment. Replay buffer, we don't have a replay buffer. Because uh, it charges a bit of, um, it uses a bit of the system resources, and we kind of want to limit that. But it is something something that I would like to implement in the future because it will enable us to clip like cool kills or whatever. But it's just not something that I've gotten around to doing yet. But it is something that I want to do. Okay, then going down to audio. I mean, again, this is going to vary greatly, but it's this is just dependent on where the audio is going to. So the desktop audio, it goes to the headphones. Yeah, so that, that's like a drop down of all of the places that, that it can come from. So the desktop audio, we basically got it going. Whatever goes into these headphones, whatever we can hear, that's, that's the desktop audio. So that's what that records. So whatever this is hearing, that's what the desktop audio is recording effectively. Our sample rate we have at 48 hertz. I can't change it now. Channels we have it at stereo. But I mean, we haven't really, I haven't really like messed with us too much. I don't think it's really something that you have to spend time on. Our DK rate is fast. I'm not too sure why we have it on fast. I haven't spent a lot of time in this page. Uh, sample rate is peak. Monitor, monitoring device, default. I've got that checked over there. Disable Windows audio ducking and then we don't use any hotkeys yeah so i don't have any hotkeys but we do have a stream deck moving on to video um so we've kept that at 1920 by 1080 output as well 1920 by 1080 downscale filter i'm not sure why we use that one but it's just something that i've used and it seems quite cool so we've got it on the langzo's sharpened scaling 36 samples and then common FPS, we record at 60 FPS because it gives you that nice, smooth, the nice, smooth gameplay, you know? And the cool thing also, if you're recording at 60 FPS, you can slow down your shot. So yeah, you can you can slow it down to like a bit, a bit slower than off speed, which is cool without it being juddery. Okay, hotkeys, we don't use any hotkeys, like I said, but there is a way that you can use hotkeys in conjunction with your stream deck and it's super cool but I'm just not that advanced yet. Hopefully one day when we're big, we can get there. Then in advanced, 
process priority is high. Um, OBS is a very important program for us while we're streaming, so it places it very like very high up on the priority list. Okay, video renderer. I've got Direct 3D 11. I don't know why we have that. A lot of these things I haven't touched or changed, guys. Color format NV12. Color space 709. Color range full. Recording. I'm not too sure what that is. I think that's just the default setting. It's not something that I've touched. Again, I haven't touched any of these things, so you can just leave it as is. Stream delay. You'll see that we have that disabled, but this is where you would change your stream delay. The longer you make the stream delay, the more of a of a buffer there is. But there's an easy way to do that. You can just you don't have to use the software to do that. You can just do it on YouTube. So on YouTube, if you schedule a live stream, you can you'll go live on your on your on OBS, but then you have to click go live on YouTube as well. So you can just delay that go live by like a minute or two, and that will give you a delay. But I don't recommend having a delay because you just you won't have good engagement with your audience you know you want to speak to them as soon as they've commented you don't want the, them to chat and then they only hear your response two minutes later that's not really a great experience i know stream sniping and stuff like that but yeah you'd rather want you'd rather want real-time engagement with your audience that's more more important i think than than stream snipers i just screen or whatever to avoid the stream snipers okay the network i haven't touched anything here you can see it's on default None of these are checked. Sources, it says enable browser source hardware acceleration. That is checked. Hotkeys, never disable hotkeys. And that's all of it, guys. Um, yeah, that's all of the settings. The only other thing that I want to show you guys is some of the filters that I've got and some of the advanced settings on, on the sound. So, so let's have a quick look at that. So if we go into Samson, which is this microphone over here, if we click on that, and we go into we'll look at the filters first so the filters so i use um an eq um and that just helps to give it a nice gives it a nice radio vibe you know what i'm saying so it gives you like just a nice clean audio um takes out some of the muds it boosts the higher tones or the higher frequencies a little bit and in that low droning sound i've taken all of that out so i don't know where it is you, can, you guys will have to download and equalize a plugin and then go and check out Harris Heller. He's super helpful. His stuff's awesome. He knows what he's talking about. There's also the another dude called Nutty. Um, I'll try and remember to link them like somewhere above their channels. Um, but they're just extremely helpful, extremely knowledgeable. I watched a lot of their videos. They've really helped me a lot. Um, yeah, but go and check out those guys and they can help you to get the right settings. I'm no genius when it comes to sound. Um, but I'm good at finding the information on the internet and it's available for you guys as well. Okay, cool. Then noise suppression. At the moment, I'm using I'm using the good quality, more CPU usage noise suppression, which works really well um, on my voice. But because Rory, Rory's screams in a higher pitch than me in a you know he, he reaches higher frequencies it tends to cut those frequencies out so when we are streaming together i usually use this one um, and then that allows him to scream and do what he wants to do and it doesn't cut out his voice so that's that's something to look out for if you if you're a bit of a screamer if you like to make silly sounds and go hee in those high tones then use this version instead of instead of this one you know because this one will cut out all the high tones you can also download third third party um plugins you know uh, noise suppression but you guys will need to go and do some um some research on that okay then lastly uh your compressor so again i copied this from i copied these settings from uh Harris Heller. Um, he had a video on this and I, uh, yeah, I just copied the settings that, that they gave. I'll try and find a link to it. I, I, I'm referencing him a lot. I hope that you guys can sub to him because he knows what he's talking about. He, he contributes a lot to the community. You can check out these settings. The ratio is the most important one, I would say. I didn't touch these, but the ratio is the most important one because basically what that does is it brings the louder bits down a bit and then the lower bits, it lifts that a bit. 
so that when I'm raising my voice and when I'm speaking like this, you know, a, the microphone's picking all of that up and it's not, yeah, you're not losing the lows when I, when I whisper, it's not disappearing completely. And when I shout, it's not clipping too easily. So yeah. Then the last thing I want to show you guys is if you go into advanced audio property properties, so you click on that little gear there and then in your advanced audio properties, there's, there's, there's a space where you can adjust your audio volume. So if you're having issues with super low uh, microphone settings or whatever, you can actually crank these to a couple of hundred percent, you know, but we don't have those issues on our, on our, um, with our microphone or on our system. So you can crank those super high. And then another important thing is the audio track. So remember when I showed you in settings earlier, how I recorded to channels one, two, three, and four, you know? So you'll see over here, the Samson, which is this microphone, records to channel two. Um, the other Samson, we've actually got another Samson, but it's not connected to the machine. That goes to five. The desktop audio goes to four, as I explained. And then the mic, which is the, the other mic on Rory's headphones, this guy over here. Um, that goes to channel three. And then you'll see uh, channel one is checked for all. It's very important that you have that checked for all because channel one is your stream. So that's not recording. That is your stream only. So yeah, make sure that you have that checked if you are streaming. Because when you stream, um, all of the channels aren't separated. They are going through, through one channel. So it's taking your microphone to take this and it takes your desktop audio and it sends them all through one channel. So that's why you have to have channel one checked for all of the sound that you want people to hear in your stream while they're watching. But then the cool thing is you can record to, cha to separate channels. So that's where it splits it for you. When you do record like this, when you record on separate channels and you play back that clip on your machine, like when you play back that clip on your computer and you listen back to it, you're only going to hear one of the channels. So you won't hear the desktop audio maybe. So you'll either only hear your voice, which will be channel two, because I think it just plays back the first channel that you've recorded. That doesn't mean that the audio is not there. It is there. Because when you pull it into your, your editing software, it will have those other channels there. But it just can't, like when you listen to playback in your Windows Media Player or on Apple, um, I don't know, whatever it's called, QuickTime Player or whatever, um, it will only play back the first channel. And in our case, our first channel is this microphone, which is channel two. So it will only play that back, but it doesn't mean that the other channels weren't recorded. They were recorded, but it will only show up when when you open it in Premiere Pro or whatever editing software you're using. So yeah, just something to look out for. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful. And please drop a comment if you yeah, drop a comment if you have anything, any other concerns, you can mail me, you can get us on Discord, you can come into the stream and ask me a question. You can DM us on Twitter. Um, but I hope that this was helpful. I hope that your streams are successful. And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope that it was helpful for you. Um, I hope that you can implement these things and that your streams and your gaming goes a lot better. Guys, if you haven't yet, please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also follow us on Twitter. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.